It's never too late to start talking with your kids about credit. In fact, the sooner you start, the better. Why? Because credit is an important part of our financial lives. It's something that we all need to use, but it's also something that can be misused. That's why it's so important to talk with your kids about credit and help them to understand how it's used wisely. So when is the best time to start talking with your kids about credit? The answer may surprise you. It's not when they're in high school or college. It's actually much earlier than that. But it's simply the best time to start talking with your kids about credit is when they're young. Even if they're just starting to understand money, you can begin to teach them about credit. And the sooner you start, the better. I'm Jalen McKenna, and with me as always is Nick Gumpert. This week, we are joined by Claudia, an expert in the world of credit. And in this week's hashtag dad life, we're going to talk about how parents can talk with their kids about credit. We'll talk about the best time to talk credit with kids, some exciting stories about credit, and the best time to start building your kids' credit. We also have a free things to talk about kids' credit checklist and worksheet in the show notes. So whether you're a parent who wants to learn more about credit or you're a kid who's just curious about credit, this episode's for you. Welcome to Beyond Real Estate with Jayla, the podcast discussing parenting, real estate, and business. Every week we go in depth on how to become successful in business and life. Jalen, take it away. Welcome to this week's episode of Beyond Real Estate, hashtag dad life. As I said, Claudia is joining us. Claudia, thanks for joining us this week. Thank you both. It's such a pleasure to be here and share a little bit or much about credit and how it really controls everything that we do and also our future for our kids because they're the ones that are going to be either aligned with it or completely uh, lost with it. And, and it all goes back to education. And like you were saying before, when do we start talking about it and how do we talk about it with them to make the difference? So thank you so much for having me here with you guys. Absolutely. The pleasure is all ours. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to jump into was just best time to talk credit with kids. And uh, before we really dive deeper into that, Nick, uh, when was the first time that you ever heard about credit or learned what credit even was? High school, for sure. Um, junior year, maybe senior year. Yeah, one of those two. It got brought up from from my mom. And yeah, Monty was a part of that conversation, I think, in some shape, way, or form. Don't distinctly remember the day, but I know it was in and around that time that uh, they, they brought up credit and the importance of it. But can't say we had an in-depth conversation other than, again, the conversation started. So... Yeah. And to that point, it's definitely not something that is taught in school. Uh, it's something that once you're out of school, you all of a sudden have this random number that's attached to you or seemingly random number that's attached to you. And you don't know why it's low or why maybe it's high uh, unless you have that conversation with uh, with your parents about it uh, earlier in life. So, uh, Claudia, from your experience in the credit world, when do you generally find people start having those questions? Um, are you the first person that talks with them? And when would you recommend that conversation to just start taking place? Well, okay, so a little bit of my background. I've been doing and working with credit reports and in the credit industry for the past 18 years now. And prior to that, I was in finance. So to be honest with you, until 18 years ago that I started really just focusing on credit, I thought I knew a lot because I had been 10 years in finance prior to that. And it was a shocker. And I actually felt like I, I had cheated my clients for 10 years because I wasn't so educated on the area of credit on its own and how much it affects and how little we know about credit and how it works. So in the past 18 years, to be honest with you, is I come across people of all ages and it's still such a... a conversation piece that a lot of people have the wrong answers, the wrong thinking. They make the same mistakes because we're taught to think financially, right? What we get, the little that we get taught in school, because it's not like they teach us a lot in finances either. So we go off of that thinking and we attach it to credit. Well, credit guidelines are completely the opposite of what we should be doing financial wise. So, and it's done on purpose, right? But we don't know this because they're not going to come out and tell us, oh, let me give you the, the wrong information so you could do it so I could make more money. It doesn't work that way. And so when I started in the credit repair business, I, the one thing that I loved about it was the education. 
the company I started with was very focused on educating the consumer, the client, and um, and the children. Because if we change our thinking, if we change what we're doing and how we're doing it, it automatically just goes down to our children, right? For example, it, it's so funny that you were talking about stories about children. My son just went to his freshman orientation and I asked him, I said, so how did it go? He says, it was boring. They don't teach us anything. They're not going to give us anything. He says, they should be teaching us about how to get a job, how to interview. He goes, and how our credit works. He says, mom, nobody knows about credit. And, you know, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's like, here I have this 14 year old, you know, complaining about what he's not going to learn and what he should be learning because those are the tools he's going to use when he gets out of school. So I think it's important that we educate ourselves, that we look for the right uh, knowledge on the subject to be able to then turn around and use it wisely when it comes to our finances and have an open conversation with our kids ever since they're little, right? Because we use money and we use taxes and that on a daily basis. So why not start them off since they're little or have knowledge of the exchange of currency and start teaching them so then they grow up and have it be second nature to them, like a habit, right? So to me, I just think that the more open conversations we have with our children about what they are going to need, the education starts at home, right? Everything else is just follow through, go to school, get, get educated, follow through and, and get something. In reality is let's teach them what's really going to make a difference because if they know about credit, their finances are going to do better. They're going to save more money. They're going to live an easier life than not. So my, to answer your question, I guess, in short is that the sooner, the better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely fair. I mean, if you're, if you're a, a teen and you're starting out and maybe you have your first job and it's, it's for, for you guys and, and even here in Denver now in and out burger, maybe that's where you're, where you are, uh, uh, chilling out. Is that what it's, is that the official title in and out burger In-N-Out? or am I yeah. adding a burger? No, no, in and out burger. Just- doing- <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, uh, you know, Californians, they're, you got, y'all are very picky about, uh, hear burgers. We'll sue you if you don't get it right. right. <laughs> 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 they have, they have ridiculously good burgers, uh, but you're, you're starting your first job and that's kind of the beginning of your financial career. And so money is the more direct thing that you're receiving from that. But, uh, there's that, that tricky little thing called credit that either isn't being built with at that point or is being built and you just don't know it. Um, Nick, what are your, what are your thoughts on when the best time to start having that conversation and, and how would you also just bring that up or, or what are some daily practices that someone can use, um, to start that conversation and to get a kid engaged with that aspect of their financial lives? Well, my thought is most every kid likes money. And, and wants more of it. So I think that's an easy way to segue into credit, but then it's a matter of how, right? How how do you do that exactly? And what exactly do you say? Um, ultimately I think credit cards, right? I I feel like that's a very widely used and accepted, uh, way that I know a lot of kids, um, pay for things. So I think maybe that's a way to intro it with regards to credit cards and, and having limits set, right? So a kid can't get themselves in over their head of two, three, five grand or more. Um, and you set a limit of a couple hundred bucks because now you can talk about what that means. And then it's not just the spending of it, of course, it's the paying off, right. And how that can affect the, the growing of someone's credit. I think that's, I guess, a a way that comes to mind for me for, I mean, we'll see if, if the crypto world takes effect and if credit cards become a thing of the past and cash, right. But I guess for where we are today. That's what comes to mind for me to introduce that to, I think 14, 15, maybe 16 years old, uh, again, to have those conversations, not that they need a credit card at those, at those ages, but to at least have a conversation because again, money is a very relevant thing when you're a teenager, right? I want to bear, buy a pair of shoes. I want to buy new shirts, hats, whatever the case. Um, but Claudia definitely want to know what your take is being a parent. And also being in this, in this space of credit. Well, okay. So for myself, I have two boys, a 14 year old and a 13 year old. 
And one of the areas that I've worked a lot with them is, you know, uh, showing them fake credit cards, right? Um, because it's like at a certain age, they're not going to allow them to go and use a credit card. Yeah. But I do show them that this is what a statement looks like. This is, these are the guidelines, right? Is if you have a limit, that's money that you're borrowing from somebody. There's an interest rate that you're paying plus finance charges that nobody ever teaches us about the finance charge when you make your payments. So that's the, that's the circling of how they, the companies keep making money on us. Um, I've taught them to use a certain amount, save their money, pay it off, right? Because in reality, if people don't have the, the amounts of money to qualify for something, they're going to need credit. And unfortunately, the guidelines, you have to have revolving accounts. You have to be using credit cards as much as, you know, we talk about don't get in debt, don't use credit cards. That's the only way someone can maintain a FICO score, consider excellent uh, in excellent standard. So if you don't use that, it's going to be very difficult for someone to maintain those scores. So that means that you're either going to pay too much. You're not going to be able to borrow somebody else's money to accomplish the purchase of a car, the purchase of a home, right? Which are the two largest purchases that we make, um, uh, unless you have cash, right? But very few people have the, the money set aside to say, well, I don't need credit. Um, and even investors at some level, they do still need to have good credit for whatever they want to back up. So for my, for my boys, what I've taught them is, look, this is what a finance charge is. So if you have, you know, a, a hundred dollars, you shouldn't be using more than $30 because that's going to keep you at a high uh, level of credit. At the end of the month, you don't pay it off. You leave about $5 in there because if you pay it off, then you lose 30% of good credit, right? So it's teaching them the guidelines and getting them used to playing with that money um, and, and being open with them, you know, make it fun, make it a game, make it a conversation when you're sitting in the car versus having them just be listening to their phones or the radio, you know, just have those conversations of like, Hey, well, how would how, what would you do if you had a thousand dollars or if, what would you do if you had, you know, like I've taught them, it's like, you know what? It's like, if you had a thousand dollars and you had good credit, I said, what would you, what would be the next phone call you would be making to the account? And why? Because I want them to get used to that every three, four, six months, ask for an increase of limit on your credit, mm. ask for a decrease on the interest rate ask for the finance charge to be dropped. See, what we don't get taught is to make those phone calls and feel comfortable making those phone calls. But if we teach them at an early age as a game, they remember that. So now they're constantly asking me, oh mom, it's been three months. Did you get an increase on your credit? And I was like, why do you want me to keep increasing my credit, right? Because eventually they want to piggy piggyback off of that. <laughs> right? But it's funny that when you talk about it and you make it a game, they'll turn around and they'll ask you questions about what you're doing and how you're doing it because they are paying attention. And if they get comfortable making those phone calls, if they get comfortable knowing the steps to take, it's going to be so much easier. So when they do get their own credit, they know how to manage it and they understand that there's going to be a finance charge, that there's going to be fees and so forth, but they'll be able to handle and manage them for their benefit. And if we could teach our children how to do that, then what's going to happen is we're changing a whole generation of kids that are going to be more savvy than us, that are going to be in a yeah. better position than us. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. We have to focus on teaching ourselves or us as adults and what we're doing and how we're doing it. So then one, we can talk about it because remember from the time that they're born to the time that they're seven years old, it's what we say from the time that they're seven to the time that they're 14 is what we do. It's no longer what we say they're watching and they're going to model exactly what we're doing from 14 to 21. Now they're trying to figure out how they're going to do it and how they're hand they're going to handle their own activity. And that's when they start listening to their friends. But if you gave them a good foundation, right, they're going to be the friends that those friends turn to for the advice yeah. versus your child turning to them, getting the advice from them and who knows what advice they're going to be getting, right? So we could correlate this to life and we could correlate it to credit and finances. 
because what they see us doing is exactly what they're going to model and what they're going to copy. So it's crucial to educate ourselves. It's crucial for us to get our credit to be the best that it can be. So then it becomes so much easier and fun to be sharing that with our children. Oh yeah. And, and I'm sure when you were saying that, uh, between, you know, one and seven, it's what you tell them and between seven and 14, it's what you do. I'm sure there's some people like, oh, it's what I do. Yeah. Oh boy. Now I'm in trouble because I have, uh, I have not been doing the right things. So I'm, I'm sure that stopped some people on their tracks. They had to, had to think about that for a second. So it, it's not too late. Um, but. You, you touched on a few things there that I that I really loved of of the best time, not only the best time to talk with your kids, but also how and when to talk with your kids in the literal sense. Exactly at what point of the day are you talking with your kids? Uh, it's it's in that free time. It's at a dinner table. Um, it's in the car rides. So I love that that is something that um, that you brought up there, and then. Just uh, everyone loves hearing crazy stories, and I'm sure Nick has a few, and uh, Claudia has probably even more fun, crazy ones of just stories of, let's say, uh, how not to use credit and how much of an impact that credit, those bad credit decisions, when not developing those habits early or knowing how to use credit effectively, how that can have a negative or even a positive impact in your life uh, down the road. So if, if both of you don't mind sharing maybe one or two stories just to round us out here. So we've already said what to do and how to do it. Now let's, let's talk about real world examples. I know a couple adults and I'll leave it at that, that choose not to use credit cards in, in any way. And that's hindered their ability to, again, as we've already noted, build credit. So what not to do, don't not use credit cards and think you can kind of navigate your way. Because again, it, it's a good tool if you know how to use it, right? As many good things. It's like things become bad once you have, once you use too much of something, right? Use it, use it in moderation, it's fine. Um, you use it and you know exactly where it's at, it's not a problem. It becomes a problem when you don't know what your credit limit is and you want to shop a lot and you don't want to look at that bill, right? That's when it becomes a problem. Problem is not having it. So that's been an interesting one that I've seen that hinder people's ability to make bigger purchases, as Claudia alluded to, being a, whether it be a car and or a house, that now they need co-signers, right? Um, and they can't even be a, a part of things initially because of the situation they put themselves in. But ultimately that comes back to what, also what Claudia had already alluded to is what we're saying as parents, right? And if we're not educated on it, like we don't know what we don't know unfortunately, right? So if it never becomes a conversation, we never saw it as a problem, but it becomes a problem when then our kid can't do what we would determine is pretty simple things that most people do. And we're just like, well, what's, I don't understand why they can't do it. Right. And it started from conversations we did or did not have. So I, I think that's massive. Right. And, and yeah. again, using credit cards as a stepping stone, not as a, an answer for all of our problems. And, yeah. and I'm, just a quick interjection there. I'm sure when you said get a credit card and that how that's a, a anyone that follows Dave Ramsey closely just started freaking out. That was not a that was not a popular statement among that crowd. So well, you, know, uh, you know, I just read something about uh, he posted something uh, advising clients to close their credit cards once they were paid off, and I cringed right because yes, the number one issue is fear right? Fear, if I have this credit card, I don't know how to use it. I don't have the habits to know how to use it correctly. So the safe way is let me just close it and not have it. Because if I close it, I don't have it. I can't use it. Then I don't make all the other mistakes. But come on, we're adults, right? We're adults. We have a choice. You have a choice whether you're going to pull out that credit card or not. The choice you're not going to have when you want to buy a house and because you closed all your credit cards, it dropped to 600 points. And now you're going to pay more money on finance, on closing costs, on interest rate. And over the next 30 years, it's going to cost you a lot more than if you would have kept those credit cards. So, you know, it really depends on where you're coming from. Like I said, yes, if you have all the money in the world set aside and just sitting there that you can go and buy whatever house, whatever car you want, then great. 
don't go into the into the uh, world of credit or financing. Unfortunately, the the large majority of people here in the United States, we depend on credit, right? Because it's going to determine what we pay, how much we pay, up to the point of where we live and our health. Credit damages a lot of people's health because it raises the level of stress, it raises the level of anxiety, it raises why? Because you're overpaying on everything that you're doing and you're only getting paid so much every single month. So you get a set paycheck, all the money's going out, guess what that's doing to your stress level, to your health? It starts even affecting that. So it's this big old spiral thing, right? And like I tell my kids, listen, when you're at school, you have a report card that comes in every three months. When you're in the real world, your report card is your credit report. Because people don't want to know who you are, what you are, where you work. We don't even care how much money you make. Let me take a look at your credit report first, because that's going to tell me exactly everything I need to know about you. It's going to tell me your habits. It's going to tell me your patterns. It's going to tell me if something happened in your life and there was a little cycle, we could see it there. So I don't even need to know if you have money, because if it's good, if I'm going to be lending you my money, I need to see where you're at in your report card. And if you are in the lower numbers, guess what? It's either going to cost you a lot of money because I'm going to make it up front, right? Or you're just not going to get it. So in reality, we never really walk away from that report card system. It's just as a different name. Now, another issue that we see is that credit really hasn't been in existence very long, right? So being that it's not a very old system, I mean, because you're talking about, let's say 50 years of credit, it's really not that that long of, of years. So our parents didn't have the education to give to us past generations, right? So now because they didn't know and everything changes so fast and the guidelines are so different, we are in a position to where we're lost. We don't know, do I do this? Do I do that? My habits are this, my habits are that. And you know, and a lot of the times it's how you do one thing is how you're going to do everything in your life. So if you have good habits in your life, then your habits with, when it comes to making the payments, having that structure, having the discipline, it's going to be a lot easier than if you're more concerned about how am I going to do and what am I going to do to cover this, to cover that. And on top of that, I have dreams. I have desires. I want to accomplish something. Well, guess what? What you're doing is not going to help you. So there's so much confusion. And when you have confusion, when you have fear, guess who wins? The industry. And it's designed for them to win. Because now I place so much fear on you. I just froze you and you're going to do and pay me whatever it is that I ask for. Because you have no alternative, you think. Now the alternative goes back to let's educate ourselves. Let's know exactly what the guidelines are. It's like playing a game. You can't go into playing a game not knowing the rules. Yet we're playing this game of credit and finance and life, and we haven't even read the manual. Some of us don't even want to look at the manual, right? So, <laughs> it's easier it's, that way. It really what? is. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean I have to read? What do you mean I have to follow certain guidelines? But you know what? The guidelines, you learn to follow them for your own benefit. Just as much as they have their, their benefit of what they want to accomplish, why don't we take the time to learn the guidelines for our benefit, for what I desire, for what I dream of, for what I want to accomplish, and to be able to change the next generation that's coming after me, right? Because if I teach them how to be in a better position, that means that as we get older, we're going to be taken care of because the economy is going to be better, because their choices are going to be better, because we're going to have healthier kids versus not. Yep. So yeah. in essence is what not to do is don't follow the crowd. Don't follow your neighbor. Don't follow your coworker just because that's what they're saying. That's what they're doing. Let's really focus and pay attention. Who are we following and why am I following them? And even when I do that, let's question that. You know, I think Dave Ramsey has a lot of great things that he puts out there, right? But at the same time, it is, if I'm listening to something that doesn't make sense for my case, I'm going to question it. And I'm going to see if it fits 
for my scenario, for what I need to do and for what my family's needs are. And then I could say, you know what, I'll take this, I won't take this. The more that we question what we do and why we're doing it, the easier it becomes because then the answers, you know, the universe has a way of sending you the answers or sending you the right people or, you know, it's okay, so I'm questioning, should I do this, should I do that? And all of a sudden, wham, you have the answer, right? I always tell my, my boys, learn how to ask the right question and you're going to get the right answer, no matter what you do, but you have to ask. Love that. Love that. And, and be sure to, to join us on Friday when we're talking about business bookend and how to, how we like to educate ourselves, definitely check in at that time. But yeah, for, for now, I think Claudia hit the nail on the head when it came to when you should be talking with your kids, when, how to talk with your kids, and then some of those topics that we, we always hear of, oh, this person's doing it this way, this person's doing it that way, and it's just not a one-size-fits-all. So whether you're a parent who wants to learn more about credit or you're a kid who's just curious about credit, this episode was for you. Be sure to check out the show notes for our free Things to Talk About Kids Credit Checklist slash worksheet. Remember, it's never too early to start talking with your kids about credit. The sooner you start, the better as you've heard here and thank you for tuning in this week's episode of hashtag dad life a part of the beyond real estate podcast please give us a five-star rating if we've earned it follow the podcast wherever you are listening and share with anyone who you know that has some kids and could benefit from this episode we'll see you on wednesday for the real estate roundup where this week we're going to be looking at how forbearance foreclosure and distressed properties are up 700 percent and what that means for the real estate market. You won't want to miss it. Want to see, hear, or listen to more of Nick's take on California real estate market? Check out my links below. Also, check out the links below for more information on products, books, or references made in this podcast. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.